This is just a, a really fancy biological computer. And if you have all those running in the background all the time, you're going to feel a sense of overwhelm. And when we're in a state of overwhelm, we really only have three places to be, fight, flight. And if you stay in overwhelm long enough, you get into the middle, which I call sort of the dark vice, <laughs> and you get into this freeze response. And so that's why leadership can, can feel very overwhelming at some point. Welcome, everyone, to this latest episode of the Development Effectiveness Strategies channel and the Jim and Java program. I'm delighted today to have as our guest, Neil Flora. Neil is affectionately called the Brain Warrior. Neil is considered a life healer and works with leaders in the area of emotional and physical functioning, especially brain function, and how to get the best out of our lives and the best out of our experiences. And so Neo came from a very challenging background to the point where he can bring many of those life experiences and especially some important tips on how to improve your functioning as a leader. Stay to the end because Neil's got some great tips that he's going to leave with us at the very end. So I think you're going to enjoy this broadcast. Neil? Sure. Thank you, Jim. So uh, my, for those of you that may not have, have met me for the first time, my name is Neil Falora, and um, I'm known as the Brain Warrior. I'm a high-performance coach for um, high achievers. I've been in this space since I was a little kid. I, I always had a propensity to this kind of work. My dad talked to me about this kind of mindset and human behavior and what does it all mean, right? And and what are we actually thinking and perceiving and and where are we in our way? And I found that myself on the receiving end of uh, people asking for counsel throughout my whole life. While I had have a background in business and medicine, I became very ill myself. And what I found is that I was storing a lot of trauma with, within my body from a, a childhood that in many ways was, you know, physically and mentally sort of abusive that didn't fall into the allopathic regular medicine categories. And in fact, I didn't really start getting well until I started to really understand that there's more to us than this biology. We're obviously spiritual creatures, but how do we, how do we start to rewire these different centers of intelligence where they line up in the chakra centers, not just the brain. And how does the subconscious um, body become the subconscious mind? Many of our viewers are nonprofit leaders. Explain to us how, how you help leaders think differently. There's a lot of great material out there, and I'm not taking the skin off the nose of any of that. But unfortunately, a lot of the self-help becomes shelf-help right? Because it, you read it and then what we all experience, or we go to a weekend seminar and what we experience is, is that our, our neurophysiology, our tendencies tend to be like a rubber band. You stretch them out and then they, they want to recoil back into place. And I think one of the things that, that, that any coach brings, but it, it, in my case, is, is a certain level of knowledge and accountability. And what we, what I, say to my clients often is that we come to who we are through experience. So it's only through experience that we're going to actually make changes. And we only get those experiences, really new experiences, usually in combination with other human beings, right? And so leaders are really used to having to be the people that other people look up to that have the answers because who do you as a leader then confide in, right? Because it can be very a very lonely place. So the first probably edict that I have is the sort of unshelling of a place where it's like, look, you've, you've got to understand that you need other people in your life. You need somebody and, and you need, most importantly, you need a coach. You need somebody who can help guide you. What are some maybe key principles uh, that you would give our viewers to take uh, take maybe a good leader and help them move to a great leader or or take a leader and move them to the next level? Sure. What so I think one of the one of the big misnomers is productivity. Uh, this has <laughs> become a 
four letter word in our in in our work environments in our western culture and one of the things that that you can't initially sometimes get many of the high performance people although i sort of sneak it in there um, without them knowing <laughs> is that you're not going to be able to do more that's that, that's not the question here because even if productivity you get more done once you get more done then you need to get more done right it's a it's a never-ending process so one of the things that is really important i think for a leader to understand is that they need some downtime some time to um, work from the inside out because you can kind of think about it like you know these smartphones that we have and their apps running in the background right your subconscious is much more powerful of a computer than your conscious mind is is and um, it's running programs in the background that we can't force close and so what that's really doing to your quality of life your ability to lead your ability to innovate your ability to connect with people um, is it's chewing up processing power this is just a, a really fancy biological computer and if you have all those running in the background all the time you're going to feel a sense of overwhelm and when we're in a state of overwhelm we really only have three places to be fight flight and if you stay in overwhelm long enough you get into the middle which i call sort of the dark vice <laughs> and you get into this freeze response and so that's why leadership can can feel very overwhelming at some point. You know, what do you what do you recommend to some of those leaders that are caught up in that trap? They're just they they feel like they're on on the treadmill. I mean, is it as easy as just step off the treadmill? First, what I would say is do an inventory of everything that you do and everything that's responsible to you. What are some things that are really not important, but you're doing them anyways, right? Think about them as as shirt as shirts or pants in your closet that you just keep hanging on to because you're going to wear someday, right? So we keep a lot of mental processes around that really aren't serving us. And then probably a second tier from that is what can you delegate, right? So many times, even though it's written in lots of books and given in leadership principles that as a leader, you need to empower your people and develop them. And, and, but in the end of the day, we feel like if we don't handle things, if we're not at the helm of the ship, the ship's going down, you know, people often say, you know, leaders are about giving and, and, and all of those things and giving is great, but my, but Jim charity starts at home. So having dedicated time where it's downtime for you, whether that's prayer, that's meditation, um, that's some form of um, mental rejuvenation, however that works best for you. Mm. And that is extremely important, having, having that um, time so that your brain and body can rejuvenate on a regular basis is actually makes you more of an effective leader rather than a productive. And those are the vocabulary words that we'd like to exchange because we always think about productivity as opposed to how effective you are per unit time. I've bought in personally, how do I create the environment now for people that work for me, leaders who are under me? And, you know, one of the things that I would say is, is that, you know, for those of us that have children or have experience with children, we often say that children are very impressionable, right? Most people would agree to that. Well, the truth of the matter is adults are just as impressionable like and to uniquely separate out is, is that most of us are, are used to spending a lot of time in the cursed, I call them the cursed hows, right? How do I do this? How do I do that? How do I create a culture? How do I, you know, effectively lead? And that's really in my book, only five to 10% of what our human potential is you know, in the same vein as children do. We children, once they leave the home, they don't really end up doing what we tell them to do. They end up modeling who their parents were vibrationally, privately or publicly. They're really smart, really intuitive, and they end up modeling those things. And the same thing is gonna be true of your organization, is that can you be the kind of leader that works on herself or himself in a way that your your way of leadership, your 
principles, your values are palpable. You don't, in fact, you need to speak less and say, you end up saying less because people are just like, I really like hanging out with this guy or this lady. I really like the way that they treat other people. I see, I feel a certain presence. What are, what are some of the, the things that you've shown us and taught us today that we could apply to, to uh, those people who are prospective or current donors to our organization? in this day and age where personal branding is so important, um, having those, those videos, those touch points that show that your organization is internally aligned as externally as your externally messaging is aligned, I think is a really um, valuable tool in, in donor relationships. Things. What are some of the things for, for our viewers who are like, you know, I, I really like what I'm hearing about, Neil. What are some of the services that you would provide to uh, uh, some of our viewers, a nonprofit leader? So um, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, which, you know, is usually a three or six month engagement where we would work personally one-on-one -on -one each, each week, right? Um, with many of the techniques that I've accrued over time, yeah. right? And so that, you know, that's that's one place. And I, but, but I, I always tie, tie it to some kind of KPI, some key performance indicator. So maybe it's, you know, more money, more relationships, more yeah. satisfaction, whatever we're looking for, but we can measure it against that because how you're showing up is then going to show up in your business as well. I also um, have um, a mastermind that I, I do, um, and sometimes in a group coaching format. Um, it can be really powerful because I was speaking earlier about how much uh, when we need change or want to effectuate change in, other, in our lives, that doing it in, in a place where we are together with other people and we, we're, because leadership, leaders don't need a, a, a compass, they need a mirror, Jim. And that's the most important thing. And when we can start to mirror back and forth, so um, that's uh, these mentor, these masterminds are called mentor minds because we're all mentoring each other. It's just not just not the Neil show. So what's what's if somebody is yeah I'm 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 there with you Neil. I, I'd love to find out more about you. Where's the best place for people to go? Sure, it's a great question. So I have some some talks and some videos on YouTube. If you just search my name, Neil Falora. If you go to my website, it's thebrainwarrior.com, or you find me on Instagram at the Brain Warrior, and there would be places where then you can discover a little bit more about me, my messaging, uh, how I think, and see if that aligns with you. Well, Neil, thank you again, and uh, we sure do appreciate uh, the time that you've given us today, and uh, I hope you'll be hearing from some of our viewers. Thank you, Jim. Well, I hope you enjoyed Neil Falora. Didn't Neil bring some really great tips and great suggestions for us on how to be fully functional and how to maximize all the parts of our lives, both physical, emotional, and spiritual. I just appreciate that so much. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and be sure to leave a comment what you especially enjoyed about Neil's presentation in the comments section. If you have any questions, reach out to me at DevFStrats on Twitter and use the hashtag Jim and Java. If you, can, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me on Instagram at Dev Effectiveness Strategies or email me at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. Please, if you aren't already a subscriber, please subscribe to this growing channel and be sure to click the bell to be notified of future broadcasts. So I always say we are here to help you increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.